We're glad you joined us for round number 10 here at the Bojangles Summer Shootout. Gates have just opened about three minutes ago. And glad to have you filing your way into the grandstand area. The beginner bandits set to go for their first heat race. My ultimate goal is to be a cup champion. When we heard about Raja and then read his resume, he looks like to be a very good future talent. I want to be the best. I see him especially compared to the other kids. He's more focused. I don't want to be, oh, first black driver to win a race or first black driver to make the playoffs or any of that. Just trying to prove to myself that I can drive. I think if he keeps on this path, he can be a top driver someday. He's racing at some of the best guys in the, their country and battling for top tens in only your sixth or seventh race, that's awesome. In five years, hopefully, be in, in a truck somewhere or maybe a Xfinity car. <laughs> All right, it is 613, 59 degrees. Get up, DC. Now, when you think of high school sports, you probably don't think about racing, especially here in the district. But that hasn't stopped one student who has a need for speed. So it's December, right? January, February, March, April, May, June. Six months to the Bojangles Summer Shootout. Yeah. And if I don't get into driver university, I still need to try to run that and get some money. There's only so much I can do right now because it's December. I mean, I can do eye racing, which is what I've been doing, but nothing else new. I got into racing since, you know, I was a little kid and from Lightning McQueen and Speed Racer and, and kids cartoons and little die casts. So it, it's been to the point where I have to ask my parents if where I got started just because it's been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. When he was tiny, maybe about six, we bought him some uh, Matchbox cars with the NASCAR drivers on them, and he just got interested. But I think it just started with kind of something small that really grew for him into really all-consuming. But I think at a certain point, it became a obsession slash passion. So at that point, I said, okay, it was more of an interest in it. Um, and then the driving, I think, just came as a natural occurrence from that. I think at first it was, mm, it's just a hobby. It's something you love to do. Sure. What do you mean you want to do this for your career? I mean, I know I had a lot of disbelief at first, I should say doubt, but he came back more than once. And then I think with his dad, they talked through kind of, there are actually some pathways for career building. In Washington, D.C., we're landlocked. I mean, there's really not much in terms of outdoor activity related to racing. They're like two hours, two and a half hours away, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and some southern part of Virginia. I said, you know what, I need to sit down and really talk to him to get a sense of things that other people have done. So one thing he mentioned was iRacing. If you want to get involved on the iRacing service, you can go to iRacing.com forward slash membership. The best live sim racing action on the iRacing eSports network, including the top oval drivers battled out iRacing, he said, is something that people are doing now and it's going to be broadcast live on YouTube. So he kind of sold me on it. iRacing provides an awesome background for us racers to, to kind of get an understanding of what it takes to race. You know, the iRacing, I've done a little bit of that. The visual part's really helpful. You can learn the landscape, and learning the landscape helps you on braking, throttle, where to be on the racetrack. One of the biggest things that iRacing teaches you is how to respect one another, how to, you know, race around other people and also be competitive. I would definitely say 100% iRacing is a, is a great proving ground for um, anybody looking to develop talent. He starts getting into it, I see that he's doing fairly well. But his mind was, this is a way for me to get recognized. All right, if I can run out, get down to a 107, I don't think we'll be good. I racing was to me it was a pretty big priority, but I racing for a year and I'm I'm still on I racing. It's just um, I kind of got what I've needed to get out of it so far, and now be able to move up to the next juncture. So uh, 2019 or 2018 is over, and this 2019 I can, I'm promising you right now 
it is going to be a year to remember and again another great year so i'm hearing him talk to these people and the races and how he's doing each week and he's progressing then he started each week he started to do well to the point where he said you know i'm in the playoffs there are 30 drivers here, and at this very moment in time, yes, they all do have an equal opportunity, but only 16 of those 30 will actually make it all the way to the feature race, but tonight it's winner take gold. And that means you cannot afford to make any little mistake. And he actually was doing quite well in the playoffs and ended up uh, wrecking, somebody wrecked him. More trouble, front point. strike, more trouble just on the front stretch. Roger Karouf just went hard into the inside wall. Missed the, the wreck that happened, took out, went from second place and got the, the rest of the top five off two. Um, got through that, me and a couple other cars, and so we were all good. The leader was gone right after that, and uh, coming off four, I think I'm clear. So guy on the top in third place, um, it hooks me, um, and I overcorrected, and then that was, that was it. As you can see, the rest of the drivers, they do not move on. Unfortunate circumstance for guys like Raja Karub. Out of the maybe 500 or something drivers, he finished 20th. So I knew the skill set was there. So then after that, the big question became, where do we go from here? I had always been around racing and became fascinated with the sport, that there were tremendous opportunities for women and people of color in NASCAR, which gave me the idea and the vision that if we could support talented drivers with the appropriate equipment and training, uh, they could ascend to the highest levels of the sport. The program, obviously, is just to help kids familiar with just racing in general that wouldn't get a chance to do what we're doing. The Drive for Diversity application process opened up and looking at the idea that NASCAR is trying to find drivers in all different realms, we said this may be an avenue. It's a long shot, but let's give it a try and submit an application. My name is Raja Kruth. I'm a 16-year-old student athlete from Washington, D.C. I recently competed in the eNASCAR Ignite Series Championship on iRacing and currently compete in the NASCAR iRacing Series. The NASCAR Drive for Diversity Youth Program will help further my racing career by providing me with a better understanding of the business of NASCAR, in addition to providing me with the chance to showcase my talent on a broader scale. For that whole Drive for Diversity process, and I applied, and it was kind of where, okay, kind of hoping for, for I guess, the underdog story, kind of, and um, I didn't really think I was gonna get picked at all. When we heard about Raja and then read his resume, we had concerns that, you know, he'd really never been in an actual race car. One of the things we saw, though, immediately, that even though he had honed his skills in uh, eye racing, basically it was a situation where he could handle a race car. Once he submitted the application, um, he made the, the top eight in race for the, uh, in the combine. Um, I started racing, you know, kind of late, uh, Audubon uh, go-karts in the uh, summer of 2017, uh, last year, and last year we got on iRacing, uh, ran the night series, made the playoffs, made the championship, got wrecked, but, you know, they know we were here, um, and uh, raced all or all winter on iRacing, and uh, glad to be here, and, uh, and yeah, that's really it. And my first taste of working with Raja was at the, the combine when he was in a go-kart and he was very sporadic on the wheel, like you would be in iRacing. And I just, you know, try to teach him, hey, you have to slow your hands down, understand, you know, s slowing your hands down, it might feel slower, but slower sometimes is faster in, in the real world of racing. Like coming down here for the combine, and honestly, I, 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 I don't want to say I sucked, but I wasn't, like, good. <laughs> and. Uh, but I was still, I guess, decent with other people and um, I guess held my own and kind of finding out that I made it, um, it, it was pretty crazy just because they decided that I was worth taking a chance on. And so, um, especially in racing, that, that was pretty awesome um, for me personally. Like the break modulation. With the summer shootout in the Legend Series over there, we're throwing them to the wolves, so to say. So as long as we see a steady progression of, you know, learning, applying what we talk about. One of the things that a driver has to bring to the sport is excellent hand-eye coordination. They need to be able to see what's going on in front of them, beside them, and behind them at all times. 
They need excellent upper body strength to not only handle the race car, but they need to handle it for three and a half, four hours. Last, they need to be able to manage the heat. It gets between 120, 130 degrees inside a race car, and they have to have the stamina to make sure that they can last it throughout the race. You know, iRacing is a great platform that um, gives you the skill set that you need to be successful in. We had drivers like William Byron, who's proven that already. So why can't Raja do that as well? It's exciting to see a driver like himself, not just a young driver, but an African-American driver. From putting everything on in the garage and uh, going out to staging and, and all of that, it was like, wow. And then looking, you look straight down and you're looking at turn three, and that's like, okay, this is, this is it. I do want to thank you guys for coming out to the summer shootout this year. Raja Karuth, driver that started iRacing. All the way from up around the, the Washington, D.C. area. That sounds like some other kid named William Byron trying to follow a very similar path. Raja Karuth leads the first lap. Raja Karuth on the high side of battling for the second spot. Raja Karuth going to lead him off into turn number one. Raja Karuth dials to the low side of David Markham. Up off from turn number four, Raja Karuth. Raja Karuth, the race leader. We just passed a one-year anniversary on iRacing on June 18th. And then for the first race of the shootout was my first time racing outside of go-karts like anything. So um, pretty, everything's pretty new, but just trying to figure it out. First, like two or three weeks all went by so fast and so um, it was kind of where I was really needing to figure out like what was what. I think I had qualified decently and so got the heat race win and started 13. Positive kind of a thinking about how that day would end up going. Full field of cars, here we go. Jason Alder sets the pace. DJ Knipe on the high side. As down into turn number one, Knipe got the jump. We've got cars around. Will Robusto is there, Gracie Trotter is there, and a whole host of others. We are under caution. Not even getting really to get started. I, I even gave the dude in front of me like a car length or two just because I knew they would stack up. Kind of wrong place, wrong time. And Will Robusto, Raja Karuth still stuck down there in turn two. Of course, there's always things you could have done differently to avoid, you know, getting in that wreck. In that moment, it was kind of like, really? Right now, they're trying to put the handle on Raja Karuth's car down here on the front straightaway. It was still me looking for just something to be kind of satisfied with leaving the racetrack. That was kind of disappointing. Jason and I kind of talked about in that moment, it was where that's a product of just this race and, and having just kids going hard, and that's part of the deal. Just move it on and take it in stride and go on to the next one. Field is set, 26 strong, and the green lights are on. Great racing here, the VP Racing Fuel Semi Pro Drivers. The yellow flag is out as we got multiple crashes here in turns three and four. There's Raja Karuth, Cutter Love involved in the secondary incident over in turn number three. Although the, the performance right now isn't what I would like, I think it's still decent considering I haven't really done anything else before. There's still a whole lot more work to do, but it's cool looking at where we're at right now. Who's your uh, your favorite racer? It's Darrell Wallace Jr. He is like the our current black driver. And some advice that, that Bubba's has given me and some help kind of has been more so with the on-track stuff. Uh, Raj has been asking a lot of questions uh, about how to just be better better racer overall. For him, it's new. From going from the virtual and computer stuff and simulator stuff to actual real life is a big step. So you finally get that sensation of speed. Talking about it has been pretty cool. Trying to pick his brain a little bit about um, different things that I'm doing wrong or I need to do better with. Last night, for example, he was running about two feet off the wall, uh, getting into the corners. And, and I'm like, hey, man, you can't be scared of the wall. You got to find your limits. It's kind of crazy to be leaning on him for a guy that I've looked up to for almost 10 years and to be in the same garage as him and 
to be working to be where he's at, it, it's it's pretty cool. Rajah's done really well all summer. He had your typical shootout woes, and he's overcome every one of them. He's gotten a couple of heat race wins, and this whole summer he's just been doing a great job at taking care of the car, and I believe he's got a bright future ahead of him. He's been working with Rajah for the entire summer shootout, and he's come a long way. At the beginning of the summer shootout, he was the goal was to finish all last and finish the race, and now we're working for top five but his results continue to improve every single week. Uh, we're really excited and it really validated our sense that we could find talent from that demographic and that platform. I've had two top 10 so far and um, I've been running right where I need to be to get those and um, that's kind of what I realized you've had to do in these races just to be in the mix. Looking where I am now and back where I was mentally and ability wise, uh, I've, I've improved, I guess, a, a good amount and learned a bunch and know a whole lot more than I did. My biggest takeaways from the shootout have been to kind of learn how racing works, um, not on a sim, but, you know, in real life, just taught me stuff that you can't really get anywhere else. How to carry yourself, how to approach race weekends, how to structure a week to make sure when it becomes race day, you can really be productive. <laughs> Uh, first thing is you drive for me, be on time. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get to the club, you can be late. <laughs> oh, I'm getting away with that, but hope y'all are doing well. He's a great kid. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's dedicated. He asks questions. He's engaged. And that's part of driver development. It's really crazy to look at. Um, what has changed in just a year. I think sitting last year there, I don't think I could have pictured being at this juncture right now, even being with Drive for Diversity or racing in any capacity. That he is doing what he loves to do. So uh, with that belief in mind, uh, even if I do sometimes watch while holding my breath, I know he is doing what he's meant to do at this moment. It's a process, not just, you know, I'm here. You know, so I always mention to him, like, don't get comfortable. You know, make sure that every day you wake up and you take advantage of the opportunity that's in front of you. Transition from, from iRacing to being in the Draft for Diversity program has been um, a big learning curve and definitely not seamless. If, if this is a goal I think that I can really attain, it's, it's something I really got to grind for. And um, that's kind of where I draw my motivation of, just because, you know, not necessarily looking for my rookie stripes, but um, I'm kind of needing to fine tune to be able to make the next step. What I would tell Raja is that I love him that I know he's going to be great in whatever he chooses, and we're in this together.